In this episode, we visit Iowa, which of all the United States produces the most corn with over 3 billion bushels per year. Leading that effort is Rockwell City, the seat of Calhoun County, known as the Golden Buckle on the Corn Belt, and home to the K0F BP repeater. Said phonetically, it's Kilo Zero Farmer's Best Popcorn. How about Rockwell City, Iowa? I would say just go for it. Just, you know, it's like spin the wheel and whatever it points to, make it happen. Good evening, K0FBP from KB3WFE from the western shore of the Chesapeake Way, Bay, by way of Echo Link. This is K0MDL. K0MDL from KB3WFE. Good evening. My name is Brian Bravo Romeo, India Alpha November from the western shore of the Chesapeake Bay near Annapolis, Maryland. Connected to this repeater by way of Echolink. Good evening. I didn't catch you the first time. I'm actually out in a cornfield in a tractor and I have the volume down a little bit there. So, uh, um, this is D- my name is David from Lake City, Iowa here, uh, about eight miles from the location of the repeater. Well, David, it's very, very nice to meet you, and, and to be honest with you, uh, I think you've got to be the only second licensed ham radio operator that I've ever talked to while uh, riding through a cornfield on a tractor. It sounds like a, a very nice uh, a very nice thing to do there, at least uh, a, an enjoyable way to uh, enjoy ham radio and get some work done at the same time there. Go ahead. Yeah, Roger. It, uh, with all the automation that we have anymore, you get in the right fields and you get time to kind of enjoy it and... Uh, um, play with the radio a little bit and uh, um, kind of makes makes time wheel by a little bit easier that way. Oh, very cool, David. So uh, out here on the East Coast now, we're pushing, uh, let's see, about 9.29, almost 9.30 p.m. And uh, what, what time do you have out there right now? We are 8.20 you're here right now. Uh, uh, got about another hour of sunlight left for the night. Uh, um so that'll be hopefully in our hour I'll be done in the field I'm in and be quitting for the night. So um, yeah, the 8:30 here right now. All right, David, that's fascinating. Well, a friend of mine, N1BCG, is conference to me, and then I'm connected to the repeater, and he and I are kind of bouncing around the country here, catching up with folks on repeaters. And you're the first we've come across tonight after trying several repeaters. Can you tell me a little bit more about this repeater? Is it a pretty active club there in Iowa? Go ahead. Yeah, actually, uh, um, a friend of mine uh, set this up not too long ago. Uh, the repeater from Rockwell had been not used for years, and he uh, got it set up at his place uh, um, and got the echo link set up and uh, everything else on it. So, uh, yeah, we uh, have uh, NG0G. Steve, he might actually be listening right now. The guy where the repeater's at is k 0 f his name is Tom, and uh, yeah, it, we, we can get pretty active on here from time to time. Depends on where we by the radio and stuff like that. But we probably got he's probably got three to five people on here. And actually, you're the second one tonight to log in on Echo Link. I was busy earlier, but I could hear Steve talking to somebody on Echo Link on this repeater earlier tonight. Oh, that's very cool, Dave. And I'm glad to hear that uh, you and your friends have taken an interest in getting the repeater back up on the air. So, enough of ham radio for the moment, Tom. Tell me about this big field you're riding around in. How 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 big of a place you got there to ride around in? Go ahead. Okay, now the field I'm in, I'm just about done with. It's actually popcorn. Um, we're putting a little bit of what we call side dressing, adding a little bit of nitrogen to it, supplement it. Uh, um, half a mile. Uh, I got a field right next to it that's a mile by a mile, 640 acres, um, and. Uh, just glad to be in the field. We've been fighting a lot of wet weather this year. Um, luckily, we've been more fortunate than a lot of places. Our crops look pretty good, and uh, um, hopefully it'll be a good year for us. There's a lot of guys that aren't even going to get their crops planted this year. Uh, we just got through a two-week stint of waiting the rain out again, and uh, we're just kind of getting where some of the drier fields we can run again. And So, yeah, we're a nice square field I'm in today, and uh, just going back and forth across the field. And, uh, um, Killing the day away. Well, that's fascinating, there, Dave. Does it take you? How long does it take you to go to get back and forth across the fields? There is it. Is it a full day, or or uh, is it just a matter of hours for you? And on the field size, like the one I'm in right now, uh, with this operation anyway, uh, it takes all about three or four hours to get across 160 acres. We got a big 90 foot wide planter, and we plant a field like this. It takes us about three hours. Uh, Harvesting it can take the better part of a day on 160 acres as long as things go good. So every operation is a little different, but this is actually the third field I've been in today, so we're having a really good day. Uh, we move about 8 mile an hour covering 60 feet, so it's a 
Yeah, that sure seems to be one of the industries that uh, technology has helped out a lot with as far as equipment and, and uh, positioning. And I guess uh, you do guys uh, probably use a lot of weather data to, to monitor the health of the fields nowadays. At least those are the bits and pieces that I uh, pick up from, uh, from information on this end of the world. The, the community I'm in, Tom, or I'm sorry, Dave, is in Southern Maryland here is a large farming community. Uh, way back when tobacco was the primary crop, years ago the state of Maryland outlawed growing tobacco, and now it's either soybeans or uh, hay, you know, feed, feed hay, feed corn, maybe some silver corn for the dinner table, but uh, uh, soybeans seems to be the, the big crop that everybody likes to grow out here, or feed hay. So, But uh, it's fascinating to see how technology has come along and made things a whole lot more efficient for you guys. It really has. And I think we're just getting a peek at what's to come. Uh, my grandpa is still alive and uh, he he remembers farming with horses. And now we're, he came out one day and I'm driving back and forth through the fields and uh, not touching the steering wheel and uh, turning around on the end is all I really have to do. And We do more monitoring what's going on and the basic settings. Um, but the automation has made it where you can run longer hours and get more done and do a better job, too. Um, and, uh, yeah, here we grow uh, commercial corn and uh, soybeans. And uh, But we're, I'm kind of in an area, and we've been into it for quite a few years. We raise a lot of popcorn. Um, this is kind of an area around here that there's a lot of popcorn raised. And uh, we've got about 1,000 acres of popcorn this year. Uh, um, that's kind of one of our little niches uh, um, it's kind of neat to harvest something that you look at it you can take it take a scoop out of the bin when you're combine and take it in the house and pop it if you want to KB3WFE on the K0FBRP repeater Dave I thought uh, when you said popcorn it was just kind of a, a, a string of corn there a type of corn that you were growing I didn't realize it was actually the corn that you could throw in the pan there and pop M1BCG, KB3WFE, Clark, what do you think? Uh, Dave's riding around a field talking on ham radio making popcorn. I like this guy. I think this is outstanding. And David, I'm, hi, this is Clark, by the way, in uh, southwestern Connecticut. And I'm just kind of curious, what are you driving? I'm driving right now is a John Deere, and it's called a track tractor. If you ever want to look it up on the Internet, look up John Deere 8370RT. 8370 Roger Tango. Um, it's a uh, rides on tracks, 18 inches wide, um, 370 horsepower. I actually just got this tractor uh, in April. Into April, I uh, uh, had one that had a lot of hours on it, and I uh, got a good enough deal to finally get traded. And uh, behind me, I'm pulling a. It's a bar with a, a 1600-pound tank on, full of nitrogen. And uh, it's uh, got 60 foot wide little discs on it, and it the discs kind of open the ground a little bit and spray the nitrogen into the ground, and then when it rains, it gets to the roots of the plant. That's that's what I'm running right now. Boy, that's really cool. I am going to check that out. I'll do a, a search for that just to uh, get a picture of what you're operating. Uh, I also find it to be pretty nice that uh, you get to operate ham radio while you're working. How many people have jobs like that? Roger that one. Uh, that was a nice thing when we got a, that's why we, Tom got, wanted to get the repeater set up. We wanted to be able to um, mess with it some uh, um, while we were in the tractors and stuff like that. And uh, I guess I, I always wanted to try and get into running my flex remotely, but it kind of gets to be a little too much uh, um, doing the HF and uh, trying to hear and everything else sometimes. So haven't gotten into doing that yet. Maybe, maybe someday down the road I can get set up good enough to do that, but right now we're just doing more on the VHF, UHF end of things through the repeaters and kind of killing time. And it's kind of neat starting to get a network, getting a few more people at it all the time on. Uh, hopefully it keeps, keeps happening. Wow. So maybe someday you'll end up getting the Worked All States Award while you're working all fields. On the way it is, I might be sitting in my office watching the stuff run on a computer screen and automatically while I can mess with whatever ham radio I want in my office shack area there. Um, I don't know. I, I I think the day is coming. I I told one guy I think that'll happen. So I thought you'd have to sit in and drive through the field and 
that's where we're at. There's a lot of automation coming in anymore, and it just keeps getting more all the time. David, I, I know uh, uh, Brian probably has some more questions or maybe wants to open it up to other folks who might be on the repeater, but I just one more question for you from me. Are you driving the tractor, or is it because you had mentioned you, you – supervise what it's doing is it gps controlled does it do you have a pre-programmed track on that or where it's uh, gps guided and you oversee it or uh, are you still driving it manually uh, it is basically it, it's kind of a mixture of both it's gps based um we have uh on our and we're running in the row crops now and uh, we are uh, we have guidance on our tractor when we plant. We we set all our AP lines up on all of our borders and all of our fields, and then uh, it's all saved into the computer that we screen that we have with us. And I actually have guidance on my planner, and that guides the planner to keep it straight so it doesn't drift on the road. It has big tracks on it that steer it to hold it straight, independently of the tractor for any drift. And then we're coming back now with the. Uh, with the uh, row crop end of things and uh, the GPS on the tractor, we'll pretty well keep it on the row 99.9% .9 of the time. We're turning it around on the ends. Um, sometimes we got to do a little bit what's called a nudge and move the line a little bit once in a while. But for the most part, it pretty well runs itself, and we turn it around on the end rows. Uh, they have actually come with a camera now. Um, it's in the testing phase that does see the rows and... Uh, keeps it lined up if something is drifted off for people that don't have uh, um, automatic guidance on the planter itself. And then uh, when we combine, they actually have feelers on the corn that go down the row, and it'll GPS will guide it in, and then it'll use those feelers to keep it straight. So it's kind of some redundant systems, systems on it, but yeah, pretty well you got to kind of get it started, but it pretty well runs itself, and you turn around on the ends, but they even have computer programs now that it will turn it around on the ends if you want to spend the money. i got to come by sometime and visit and see this. Brian, back to you. This is N1BCG. And KB3WSV on the K0FBP repeater with uh, Dave K0MDL. And uh, it's it's fascinating equipment, Dave. I've spent uh, I'm third generation in the automotive industry, and uh, what we're seeing uh, 37 years doing it professionally, and what we're seeing come down the the road, so to speak, into the shop there with their collision avoidance systems and traction control systems and stability control systems is just fascinating. So it, it'll be a matter of time before uh, we're all just sitting back watching stuff on a computer screen or 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 being driven around by a computer. I think it uh, it seems to be happening uh, or coming closer and closer, faster and faster. David, uh, Clark and I are, are part of the No Net Net, which is kind of a net that doesn't have a particular time or a particular place or anything to happen. But uh, we ride around and ask folks about uh, how long they've been. How long have you been a ham there, Dave? I've been licensed for just uh, oh, not even getting close to six months now. Uh, my friend Tom got into it last summer, um, kind of got me into it, and I found time about January, February, and I got my uh, technician and general class. Uh, I was working towards amateur extra class, and uh, we got busy in the field, and that kind of ended up, but hope to get back at it here and uh, get the amateur extra class pretty soon, the endorsement, and have full endorsements. Uh, um, we have uh, these set up, and then I've got a HF ten antenna at home too on a Flex 400 that, or 6400 that I just got. Uh, and right now, I'm the tractor is running a Yazoo uh, FM 400. Wow, David, sounds like you've jumped in it with both feet. The Flex 6400 is a very, very nice radio, and congratulations on getting your technician and your general there. We sure are glad to see. Folks like yourself and your friends take an interest into the hobby there and get on the air. I'm curious, uh, other than what you, other, I guess your friend encouraged you to get on the air there, or did you? What what intrigued you to get on get on the ham radio? Go ahead. Well, I've always had these business band radios for the farming business here and stuff. And uh, no, he uh, he got into doing it. He said he'd always wanted to do it for years, and I didn't know a lot about it. And I kind of he got his license, and uh, he he. Uh, Went three times and got all past all three and got fully licensed and uh, kind of watched him starting to do it and kind of got excited about it and then we started talking about 
these repeaters and stuff like that, and uh, putting up some different repeaters, and uh, um, that kind of got me into it. And uh, I actually have a repeater of, of my own set up, uh, um, but it doesn't have Echo Link, and it does not have uh, um, uh, anything else on it. It's just a you know regular repeater local right now. Uh, the, the project this summer sometime is to hopefully get it set up on Echo Link there. Well, I think that's absolutely fantastic, David. This is KB3WFV by way of Echolink on the K0FBRBP. I'm sorry, K0FBP repeater. So, Dave, uh, you told me you got a friend there that's uh, encouraged you to get into it. Sounds like you guys are hot and heavy into it. What do you What do you like the most about ham radio there so far? Go ahead. K0MDL. Yeah, um, I don't know. Uh, the HF, I really really been enjoyed it for a while but it gets tougher uh, i want to get my flex 6400 set up uh, to do it um mobily but it's not as easy to mess around with hf while working in the tractor here um and that's where i spend a lot of my time in the summer we run a lot of custom businesses but i'll tell you what it's just interesting uh um what you can do from day to day and then uh getting into this echo link and then uh um i've also got a little setup but done a little bit with Wires X, um, hoping to do more with it. Uh, so that's kind of interesting, too. Uh, just the uh, multiple things you can do. And uh, the funny thing for me is is all the money I spent on business band radios and how limited they are in distance and everything else versus um, what it costs, all the more than what it costs for a basic ham radio and all the functionality, functionality of one of them is what's very interesting to me. So, Dave, are you guys doing anything to encourage new hams to, to join the, the hobby, or or, do the, or when they come on to the repeater, do you do you uh, do anything to encourage them to come back there, God? Tom, Tom, the one that set up the repeater, has been uh, more proactive about it. Uh, but yeah, I've uh, tried to talk to some people into it. He's actually got a couple more people he's just talked into it, and I think his dad, Tom's dad, just got his uh, technician license about a. Uh, week or two weeks ago, um, or something like that, uh, um, he's listening on the repeater sometimes, too, I've heard him on there a couple of times, uh, um, so, it, Tom's really the more proactive, K0FVP there is the more proactive one to try and get people into the hobby. Well, very cool there, Dave, and it's, it's all good to hear, I'm glad to hear that you and Tom and everybody are doing everything you can out there to encourage other hams to get on and, and use their licenses and, and others to, to get their licenses and join you. And uh, my hat is off to you. Well, I, I guess, uh, um, again, my hat's off to you even more because I like lots of popcorn, and that's fascinating that you're actually, you, you've got to be the first person I've ever met that's actually growing popcorn there, Dave. Go ahead. Yeah, we uh, raised for a ConAgra company, um, like Act 2 and Orville Redenbacher is what they sell. And the guy that owns this repeater, just so you know, is if you want a connection to him, I don't know if they sell it in your stores, but he's actually the creator of Farmer's Best Popcorn, it's called. Um, it's in blue packets. Uh, he raises, raised his own corn and cleaned it and packaged it himself. Uh, they had microwave and uh, one and three pound, I believe, that he sold. Um, started his own business selling popcorn and turned into quite a business. And they said this repeater that he uh, he was actually doing that, raising uh, raising popcorn in his field, harvesting it, cleaning it, and packaging it. And uh, it was it's some of the best stuff around. If you ever are in the store and see Farmer's Best Popcorn, that's, that's the guy that has, is uh, controlling and uh, keeping this repeater going here. Well, that's fantastic, Dave. What a great story. And that's one of the best things about ham radio that I enjoy, and, and Clark's riding along with me here, uh, is that uh, when you talk to anybody on the air, like you and I meeting for the first time here, you find a fascinating story. I find it fascinating that you're riding around in a field in, in a tractor and the technology that you're using to help you uh, do your job more efficiently. And uh, the fact that you're growing pop popcorn makes my mouth water. So we'll have to keep an eye out for Tom's uh, popcorn there, and maybe we'll add that to the, the next time we're here in the shack. That, now, what you and Dave, Dave, you and Tom should do is, is go and start a, 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 a ham club there, and you can call it the K0POP or K0POP. 
Tom's call sign, the K0FBP, that actually came from, uh, he got that uh, vanity call sign, Farmer's Best Popcorn there, is what, what he did. Uh, for me, K0MDL, my call sign is uh, um, MDL Farms Incorporated. That was the corporation my dad started uh, years ago. We started a farming corporation, and uh, it was the initials of uh, my mom, my dad, myself, and my three sisters. That's where we got, that's where my call sign comes from there. And that's neat. You're carrying on the family history there. So is it Mike Delta Lima or Mike Victor Lima? Mike Delta Lima. Yeah, okay. So, Dave, whereabouts is this repeater? The the note, the echo link here says Rockwell. You know, uh, is that is that the right city for where it's at now, or is it in a different city? Oh, Rockwell City, that is correct. Uh, the repeater is just outside of town, just a very little bit at his home farm there. Um, is where it's at. Uh, he uh, he set it up there. So yeah, it is at Rockwell City yet. Oh, that's very cool. Do, do you? Um, I guess uh, with this, the terrain there, I can imagine. I haven't been out very far, very far to the west there. I think the furthest we've gotten out west is is uh, uh, Illinois and Indiana. I'm sorry, Indiana and in, in, uh, Kentucky, Louisville. So. Out there, I imagine the terrain is very, very flat, and I'm, uh, the reason I bring that up, I was kind of curious, is, is how Tom, how high Tom has the repeater antenna. Is, if is, he actually has a tower up, or, or, or perhaps maybe I can see how putting it on top of a, a silo, if he has one, maybe would be uh, useful, or, or how does he have it set up? Got it on top of a barn. Uh, it's a. Uh, um his elevation is pretty good, really good where he's at. I am probably 12, 14 miles as the crow flies from him, and I can hit it with this FM 400. Uh, I can get it upwards of 30 miles, 40 miles away, depending on where we're at. Um, so he is probably, oh, I would say 40, 50 feet off of the ground. And mine that I put up, I have a grain bin, and it's 115 foot to the peak of it, but I got to do some more checking. But elevation wise, I think I sit lower where I'm at, and so I think we might actually his repeater, my repeater might be at about the same same height. Um, but that yeah, that's how he set up is just on top of a barn. It's it, it's the highest point for quite a ways. Uh, when we go north of Rockwell City, uh, it, it's not as good as. Uh, south, it doesn't seem like times are just, you know, typically you get in the dead spot, and then there's days where it's better and days where it's worse, but uh, I, we get to Jefferson, which is about 30 miles away, 35 miles away, and uh, going south, and we can still hit the repeater pretty good. Well, that's fantastic. You guys sound like you got some really, really good coverage. Well, Dave, look, it's getting late here on the East Coast, and I do have to work tomorrow, and I'm sure Clark's got a long day there tomorrow. It was absolutely fantastic to catch up with you, and great to hear about all the work that you and Tom are doing with the repeater and Echolink and uh, getting your licenses. It's it's awesome to catch up with a pair of new hams. Uh, I wish Tom were around. We'll have to see if we can find some of his uh, farmer's best popcorn here in the stores. We'll certainly keep an eye out for it. And uh, we sure do appreciate you chatting with us here, uh, Dave. And uh, maybe Clark and I will slide back in here again one night. Go ahead. Through that, well, it was great talking to you guys, too. Uh, hopefully catch you sometime on here again. Uh, you guys have a good night. I actually just pulled in for the night, too, and uh, head up and get something to eat and uh, get headed back at it tomorrow. So it's been great talking to you guys, and uh, maybe we'll catch you guys again sometime. This is K0MDL. All right, Dave. Thanks so much for picking us up there. I really do appreciate it. I'll let you get into your boy and your and your family there and your dinner, and uh, we'll catch up with you here at some time in the future. K zero M D L K B three W F E seven three Dave zero M D L K seventy three U two. Thanks for being a part of the No Net Net. Be sure to check back for more episodes as the Traveling Repeater Road Show visits amateur radio operators around the country. You can write to us at the no net net at gmail.com for more information. That's the no net net at gmail.com.